Hello everyone, welcome to Chemison Complete Chemistry. In today's video, we are going to see the fragmentation techniques. That is the next topic in mass spectrometry chapter and one of the techniques is alpha cleavage that we will see in this video. So, we will see in three compounds, one is alcohols, amines, aldehydes and ketones. These are the compounds where we will see how an alpha cleavage is performed. So, this is a general reaction for alpha cleavage in amines. Now, fragmentation techniques basically are of two types. One is the alpha cleavage that we will see in this video with examples and then we will see in the next video that is a name reaction or we can say a rearrangement that is called as McLafferty rearrangement. Okay, both these fragmentation techniques are very important. Now, what are the products formed in this fragmentation techniques? There are two products formed. One is a charged fragment. We know that is what? That is detectable. This is detectable. If that is what? That is a carbocation that will be formed. Carbocation or any species having positive charge. So, this charged fragment will be the base peak. What is base peak? Base peak corresponds to the most stable fragment most stable fragment okay and how do you identify the base peak uh, it will be the peak with maximum height or highest height peak with the maximum height is called as the base peak what it corresponds to it corresponds to the most stable fragment and another fragment that is uncharged which is the free radical that will be formed a radical species is formed that is undetectable or is not detected is not detected okay so how how questions can be formed from this one is they will either tell you to directly draw the structures of the charged and uncharged fragment second it, they can ask you to find out the m by z value of this charged fragment what will be the m by z value of the charged fragment after performing alpha cleavage or McLafferty rearrangement these are the only two types of questions that can be asked from this topic now let us see what is an alpha cleavage alpha cleavage is breaking of the breaking of the carbon carbon bond nearest to the functional group just next to the functional group just next to the functional group that will be broken okay so let us see with the help of example alcohols let us take an example of propanol ch3 ch2 ch2 oh one propanol oxygen has lone pair so what is the first step first step is removal of the most loosely bound electron from the molecule that is what that is electron will be removed from the lone pair that is oxygen that is non-bonding electron pair this is which step this is called ionization okay suppose this electron is lost so what we will get ch3 ch2 ch2 oh now oxygen has one radical and one electron is removed so we will add a positive charge that is cation other lone pair remains as it is this is a species having one radical as well as positive charge that is cation. So, this is what this is called as radical cation or we had seen it is also called as molecular ion. Okay, now fragmentation of this radical cation will take place. CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. Oxygen has one radical positive charge, one lone pair. Now, which is that carbon-carbon bond nearest to the functional group? This is the functional group. So, this carbon-carbon bond is going to break. How it will break? Homolytically. Homolytic means, homo means same, lytic means break. Lysis or lytic means fission or break. So, homolytic fission. So, both the carbon forming the bond will get one one electron each. So, what do we get? We get one is this ethyl radical CH3, CH2, single electron here plus we will get CH2 radical O, it has a radical plus charge, hydrogen and a lone pair. 
Now both these electrons will form a pi bond. So CH2 double bond oxygen one lone pair here electron is involved in the formation of pi bond. So what is remaining is a positive charge. So this is a charged fragment. Okay, that will be detected. This is this is detectable and this is going to give us the base peak. So we have to find out what we have to find out the m by z value for this. Okay, this radical is what the radical is undetected or not detectable. So how do you find out m by z value? What is m by z value? It is nothing but molecular mass of the fragment. Okay, so here how many carbons are present? Two carbons. So first we write down the molecular formula. C. Sorry, there is only one carbon. C1. How many hydrogen? Two plus one. Three. C1 H3 and one oxygen. Atomic mass of carbon is 12. 12 into 1 plus 3 into atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. 1 into atomic mass of oxygen is 16. 12 plus 3 plus 16. 12 plus 16, 28. 28 plus 3 is 31. So at m by z is equal to 31, for one propanol we must get a base peak. That is the peak with the highest intensity. Let us see. So here, let me zoom this. This is the mass spectrum of one propanol. So here you can see the maximum peak is at m, m by z is 31. Okay, in this way we can find out the base peak and confirm our answer. Now let us see for amines. Amines, let me take an example of two propanamines, CH3, CH, CH3. NH2 lone pair first step is again what again it will be ionization remove one electron we will get nitrogen radical plus charge H2 carbon hydrogen CH3 CH3 now it is which is the nearest carbon carbon bond that can be broken now it is symmetrical, so you can break any bond. This bond we can break. Okay, so what we will get? We will get here we will have radical, hydrogen, methyl, nitrogen also having one radical, positive charge plus methyl radical. This is not detected. Not detected. So here this electron and this electron will combine and we will get a pi bond. C double bond NH2, nitrogen will get a positive charge, methyl, hydrogen plus methyl radical. Now this is a charged fragment, again we can find out the m by z value for this, for this fragment. How many carbons are present? 1, 2. How many hydrogens are present? 3, 4, 5, 6 and how many nitrogen? 1. So carbon is 2 into 12 plus 6 into hydrogen atomic mass is 1 plus nitrogen is 1 into 14. 12 to the 24 plus 6 plus 14. So this will be 30, 24 plus 6 30, 30 plus 14 is 44. So at m by z is equal to 44, we will get the base peak. Okay, 2 propanamine, you can see. Okay, let me zoom this. For 2 propanamine, the base peak is at 44. Okay, so our answer is correct. Next is for aldehyde and ketones. Again, we will do the same thing. CH3, C double bond O, CH3. This is what? This is acetone or we can say propanone. Okay, again, first step is ionization. So, I will remove one electron. Okay, what I will get is C double bond O. One lone pair remains as it is. Electron, positive charge. CH3, CH3. Now, here, which bond will break? This is important. The carbonyl carbon and the carbon will break okay the carbonyl carbon and the just next carbon this bond will break 
So this bond will break homolytically like this. What we will get? Carbon double bond O lone pair one electron positive charge. And here we have CH3. Okay, CH3 and then one electron is here on this carbon. Plus we have CH3 radical. This is not detected. Okay, so again this electron, sorry, this electron and this electron they will combine and we will get it here already. There was a double bond. So now we will get what? We will get a triple bond. C triple bond oxygen, one lone pair, positive charge, and then there is methyl. So this is a charged fragment. Plus methyl is undetected. So for methyl, we will not get the peak methyl radical. So here again, how many carbons are present? One, two carbons. How many hydrogen? Three. How many oxygen? Two carbon, three hydrogen, one oxygen. So carbon, two into 12, plus three into one, plus one into oxygen is 16. Atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So 12, twos are 24, plus three, plus 16. So this will be 24, plus 16 is 40. Okay, 40 and 3, 43. So at m by z is equal to 43, we will get a base peak for acetone. So here you can see for acetone the base peak is at 43. So the answer is correct. Now there are two more examples. One is triethylamine. How do you do alpha cleavage in triethylamine? Triethyl means there will be three ethyl groups CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3. Okay, so here lone pair of nitrogen, this will undergo ionization. Here I am drawing the, I am directly drawing the radical cation. Okay, cation and an electron. Now, which is the carbon-carbon bond next to the functional group? This is the functional group. Now, this is the carbon-carbon bond, this is carbon-carbon bond, and this is the carbon-carbon bond. So, which bond to break? All are symmetrical. You can break any bond, we will get the same answer. Suppose I break this bond. What I will get? I will get nitrogen, electron plus charge, CH2 radical, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3. Now here again this will form a double bond. So I'll write the double bond here itself. So this is this is the charged fragment that we will get. So we have to find out the m by z value for this. How many carbons are present? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons. C5, how many hydrogens? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. C5, H12 and how many nitrogen? 1. Okay, C5, H12 and so 12 into 5 plus 12 into atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. Nitrogen atomic mass is 14. So 12, 5 is 60 plus 12 plus 14. So this will be how much? 12 plus 14 is 26. 60 plus 26 will be 86. So, at m by z is equal to 86, we should get the base peak. So, here you can see this is the base peak for triethyl amine okay, at 86. Now, this is the last example 2 pentanone. Pent means, pent means 5 carbon, one means ketone. So, ketone carbonyl group will be present at the second carbon second carbon of the five carbon chain so ch3 c double bond o ch2 ch2 ch3 now here which is the carbon carbon bond that will be breaking carbonyl carbon bond between carbonyl carbon and the next carbon so this carbon carbon bond can break and this carbon carbon bond can break so how do you decide which carbon-carbon bond will be forming? So you have to remember the stable radical 
wherever the stable radical will be formed that bond will break that bond will be broken okay so which two radical let's say this pathway is a and the other option is let's say i will say that option as b let us do both the cleavage and see which radicals we are getting in first case we will get this methyl radical plus c triple bond o positive charge ch2 ch2 ch3 and another possibility is the blue one that is i will get ch3 c triple bond o positive charge okay one lone pair here also one lone pair plus ch2 ch2 ch3 this radical now if you compare both the radicals what is the order for stability of radicals tertiary is most stable then secondary then primary and then methyl radical okay because here carbon okay there is no group that can stabilize this radical whereas in this radical if you see there are two hydrogens and one is this ethyl group ethyl group can stabilize this radical via inductive effect so this is what this is more stable okay so this is the correct pathway that is b is correct a is going to be incorrect this is incorrect a is correct so we have to find out the mass of this fragment m by z of this fragment okay how do, did we get this charged fragment let me draw here ch3 c here again there is one lone pair one positive charge and one cation so this already had a double bond one lone pair positive charge one radical this carbon got one more radical okay plus this uncharged fragment ch2 ch2 ch3 now this has formed the triple bond like this the c triple bond o plus charge one lone pair ch3 this is a charged fragment we have to find out the mass of this carbons how many carbons are present one two how many hydrogen three how many oxygen one so 12 into 2 24 plus 3 into 1 plus 1 into 16 this will be 12 3 is a 36 sorry 12 2 is a 24 12 2 is a 24 plus 3 plus 16 this will be how much 24 plus 16 is 30 40 40 plus 3 is 43 so we must get m by z is equal to 43 base peak at 43 so here you can see easily that the base peak is at m by z is equal to 43 okay so in this way from the mass spectrum we can confirm whether we have done the correct fragmentation or not so this is the end of this video i hope you have understood how do we do a alpha cleavage in amines alcohols and aldehydes and ketones thank you so much in the next video we will see mcleferty rearrangement and the last topic will be how do we identify the isotopic peaks for example some hetero atoms are present like bromine chlorine sulfur how do we identify from the mass spectrum and then we will see the very last topic is going to be how do you find out the intensity ratio Thank you so much.